So I don't think people realize that when people try to humble us as exoticals, as pretty women, that they really are actually helping us level up. <clears throat> For example, right? When I'm in my when I'm trying to reply to you guys' comments and I have to filter through certain certain comments, but I'm you guys said you don't want me to filter comments, so I've been leaving them there. But then there will be those people that will be like Oh, you you spelled this wrong in your thumbnail. You used the wrong there. It's supposed to be that there, not this there. And I'm just like, oh, well, thank you. Uh, so let me go fix that because that was my error. That was a you know, human error because I'm a human being and human beings make mistakes. And so when they be trying to humble you, they really are actually helping you do better. I know another critique that I got and I, I look at it as a critique rather than them trying to throw shade. Uh, somebody was like, you use the word like a lot. Oh, so ever since they said that, I, I noticed I say like a lot. And I don't know why I say like a lot. It's a habit. And then you don't know <clears throat> you don't know you have a habit until somebody tells you about it, right? So I've been ever since then. I've been trying to not say like a lot <laughs> in my conversation. Just because I live in the valley doesn't mean I have to sound like a valley girl. <laughs> but I mean, I grew up in the suburbs. I grew up in mostly white, Hispanic, Asian communities. Um, I didn't grow up in a predominantly black community. Any black people that I grew up with grew up in the same neighborhood that I, as I did. We were the um, minority. So I always grew up in situations where I was, you know, white people were the minorities, the suburbs. A tra I lived in a trailer park. That was the last time I ever lived outside of the suburbs. That was a trailer park filled with white people in Missouri. So I, I grew up sounding like um, a quote unquote white girl and I got picked on that when I would go to majority black communities, especially when I would visit my cousins and family. My grandma and them will always joke at me and my siblings because we are the only ones. My father <clears throat> left the hood and joined the military. And because of that, we as his kids got to move around the world. And we just didn't grow up around a majority black people. So we don't have that black sense. We don't we don't talk like that. We talk about we talk like the white people were around, and that's normal talk to me. So when I go to like ur more more black community, more urban communities, the hood, um, I notice they do talk different, and I sound different. But they would pick on me about me sounding different. I like, talk white. <clears throat> yeah, I never picked on how they sounded, but they always picked on me. But I digress. Um, oh, yeah, another thing. I say um a lot. <laughs> so I've been trying to check my ums and my likes. Because people be trying to humble you in the comment section, trying to make you feel bad. And it don't work. I look at it. I was like, oh, well, thank you for helping me fix that issue. I'm going to go fix that now. Real life, I had a situation where somebody was trying to humble me about my hair. They was trying to ask me, uh, what did they say? She had told me my track is showing. She said it kind of like, wow, like, is your track, do you have track? Something to that effect. And, you know, when she said that, I was like, uh, let me make sure I'm not showing track. So ever since then, I've been not showing no track. I've been doing my hair in styles in ways where I don't show my clip-ins because I wear clip-ins. I don't wear, I don't actually like to sew weave into my hair because I like to take it out at the end of my day. I don't like to keep weave in for like days. I like to take it out and let my hair breathe. You know, I only wear the clip-ins when I go out to somewhere where I want to feel like I want to have long hair in there. Other than that, I just wear my natural hair. My hair is starting to get a little longer. I'm going on this hair journey trying to save my hair. Um, 
I might do a story time about that. How my hair, I had like, because when, I, I, when I'm in California and, um, look at where you um, but I was homeless when I first came out here and I had to basically pick myself up from those, from the, from being homeless and I had to start with Uber Eats and then I worked from this job to that job and finally I'm at the job that I'm at. I'm finally at the point where I can say that I'm stable now, but, and that's why I'm starting to be able to go to my hairstylist every time I need to get my hair done versus me doing it myself because I notice when I ever try to do my hair myself, it just doesn't give the same, like my hair velocity is so, like my hair is so dry, it absorbs everything. So I notice it's only, it only stays not dry for a long period of time when a professional does my hair. I don't know what they're using that I can't find at the store myself. So that's why, you know, ever since I've been getting my hair done, my hair professional only, my hair has been retaining less, everything. So I'm just going to keep on to a hairstylist. But for the longest time, I couldn't afford to keep going to one. So my I couldn't retain less for nothing. Like, 4C here, I love you, but sometimes you just be giving me a hard time. So it's really hard for me to retain less when I do my own hair. Because I just can't find no products for 4C hair. I think I have 4C, 4A. I know the top of my hair is more like a 4AB. It's two different textures, but the back of my hair is type 4. It has to be 4C in the back for sure. Without a doubt, because I be having... Because it seems like when I was natural, my hair would grow longer in the front versus, like, the crown versus, like, the back or the nape or whatever they call it. And I would notice that my curl pattern was different on the top versus the bottom. And it was, I don't know, maybe because of the curl pattern. I don't know if they were just different lengths because of that. But ugh, it was just hard finding, like, I tried As I Am products. I tried... Uh, what is it called? Carl's, Carol's Daughter products. Um, all the natural hair care lines. And I've tried to pay for the more expensive stuff. I tried NYX. I think that's the name of it. I don't know. I've tried Design es- Des- Essentials. And I just can't find nothing to keep my hair done on my own by myself. Because of my hair velocity, I think. I don't know what the velocity is when it's very dry and it absorbs in seconds, no matter what. But it seems like whenever I go to a professional, I don't got no issues. My hair has been doing good. So basically, I'm just learning how to take people's humbling tactics, people's talking shits as just some critiques for me to better myself. Because that's all it's going to do. It's going to help me level up better by you pointing out things that I can fix. So and then I'm more aware of them so I don't make those same mistakes again. So thank you. The haters sometimes really do be helping you. And they don't even realize it. And they be trying to make you feel bad. And even when the girlies at work try to pretend like they don't see me when they see me and try to click up against me, have all the black girls not talking to me. All of, I'm the only one they just so happen to not be talking to, even though I'm black just like y'all, maybe the lightest one, but I'm still black, but they don't treat me like, <laughs> they treat me like, like I'm not part of, like I don't, like they want, they can't wait for me to get, leave the job or something. Like, they really are starting to click up on it. I ain't even do nothing to them. Like, y'all giving me that much power now. It's just obvious at this point. Y'all giving me so much power. Y'all are trying to make me feel bad, and I'm not going to let y'all do that. Like, every day I deal with this stuff. Like, real time. I just left work. I'm in the car now. That's why y'all probably hear my AC running. And... That girl at work is just, she's terrible. A hot mess. It's like, she, 
at this point, it's obvious. I know you cl- you guys are clicking up against me. I'm the, literally the only one you guys do not talk to. But the guys, I'm. they talk to me all day long. And I think that just makes them mad. It has to be the reason. But I literally am very nice to these people, even though they're mean to me and rude to me. I still say, excuse me, and when they walk past and pardon me and thank you. And all. But they don't say nothing to me. But it's okay. It's just letting me know that I'm that girl. <laughs> I'm that bitch. Because, I mean... What is what is the reason? <laughs> what was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the I reason? Had a reason? What is the reason for you guys to be? They don't even sit in the same like table. Like it started off for them distancing themselves from me at the table slowly, and they started to sit at a different table. Now, now they sit in an entirely different room for me. I'm the only one never invited to sit with them. But it's okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna dim my beauty down for nobody. <laughs> Level yourself up if you want male attention so bad. Like I don't even like every now and then I like to have fun and flirt because I'm my personality. I like to have fun. Exoticals United. <laughs> we have the same type of personality. I swear. Like I do like to play with my charm too. I. <laughs> I I kind of like the guy. You're right. The guy has to do it first for me to do it. But then then we do it all the time. <laughs> so I think a lot of those girls see that because there's actually two people at work that I be play flirting with. I think it's fun. I like to play with my my pretty girl. My I like to play with my pretty. So. That's one way I like to play with it. Like, if a guy thinks I'm cute and I think he's cute, I just, you know. And it's just simple, harmless fun. Like, it's never going to go past that. But the girlies, I guess they get mad about that. Because they can't get that type of attention. Oh, man. And they really try to cock block every time a new guy comes in to make sure he don't see me. I notice that shit all the time. Because I work at a type of job where we're always rotating new people. And new people are always coming in and leaving. It's one of those type of jobs. And I swear, every time a guy sees me or I know he's looking and everybody knows he's looking. Because it, it happens so much. This is like the story of my everyday life. Like, I... I can make videos for days. I just have stuff going on in my life. That's why I can't post every day. Because I have things going on that I have to take care of. But I swear I could I could make a story time for days about my experiences because it's like an everyday thing. It's something different every day. I don't care. White people, black people, Hispanic women. It's always it doesn't matter what race they are. If they feel like I'm, if they put me on a pedestal or somehow in their heads, it's just, but yeah, I, I'm, I don't want to make this video too long. I just wanted to talk about like how when people try to humble you or try to make you feel some type of way or make you feel bad for being pretty, for being exotical. Just understand that they are, or it's, don't take it, take it as a critique, take it as, oh, okay, let me fix that. Don't make, don't let it make you feel bad because you're letting them win. They, that's what they wanted you to feel is bad. So if you give them that, they feel like they made you feel bad and their ego gets, but don't do that. Don't give them that. Don't do that. No, no, no. I like to t- I like to play mind games with these girls. I swear, like, I cause I know they get mad when I get male attention, and I have the type of job where our environment is very family like. So I give certain people hugs, who I feel like I'm more close with than others, as far as my coworkers. And the girls always are looking at me when I hug this one particular guy, and he's just. And he's also one of those guys, like, we kind of, like, both 
see like we're both attractive and we both know we're both attractive and we both give like we know we think each other is attractive type of vibes but we're not stepping into that boundary you know what i'm talking about if y'all know y'all know it's just kind of like an unspoken attraction with this guy and but it's not a big deal to me because my like i told y'all my nature is fun and flirtatious and and i like i told y'all a lot of the times i like to play with my pretty and i like to flirt sometimes if I feel like it with a guy who I find attractive. And if he finds me attractive, and that's just what we do. It's just, it's, it's simple fun to me. It's just fun. And um, the girlies don't like that, I guess. You know, they can't do it also. He's not my boyfriend. We're just playing around. <laughs> I think that's what attractive people, we just like to play with our, our attractive that's just an attractive person thing i guess i don't know you have to be attractive to understand i guess no shade um but yeah i'm just ranting ranting at this point but let me know what you guys think in the comment section um do y'all know what i'm talking about do people be trying to humble you and if so just remember if you if you're taking it don't take it the wrong way if you are if you are just use it use it as like critique to, to do you know to fix those things so they can't talk shit no more it's like okay i fix that now what you gotta say thanks for making me more perfect than you know because you think i'm perfect right you already put me on this high pedestal so let me also fix these flaws so i can better myself as a person bitch Anyway, um, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening.